settlement, and that when numerous phone calls with both sides in the issue failed to produce results, he decided to fly back to Kansas City from Jefferson City tonight to meet with the board. Jackson County Executive George Lear issued a statement tonight indicating the Kansas City teacher strike situation had worsened and that he was very concerned that there are still misunderstandings concerning the proposed settlement and that when numerous phone calls with both sides in the issue failed to produce results, he decided to fly back to Kansas City from Jefferson City tonight to meet with the board at this hour. Sources say teacher union president Norman Hudson will then be contacted by phone in an effort to iron out the hang-ups in the strike that is now in its fifth week. The case involving the killing of a Raytown service station attendant has been turned over to the Metro Squad. About 2.30 this afternoon, 72-year-old Earl F. Stang of 8802 East 73rd in Raytown was shot to death during an apparent robbery attempt. News of the hour on the hour from American Information Radio. This is Richard Wall from Los Angeles, and at this hour, it's four out of five for the Democrats in special congressional elections this year, and the victory tonight for Democrat Bob Traxler in Michigan's 8th District is a particular setback for President Nixon, who campaigned for Traxler's opponent last week. In Saginaw, Republican James Sparling told his supporters a short time ago... From all indications, uh, Mr. Traxler has uh, won this election, and I congratulate him. But before uh, going any further, I want to say to literally thousands of people who made a commitment to me, who worked for me and helped me, I want to say thank you very, very much. James Sparling was the first Republican to lose in Michigan's 8th Congressional District in 40 years. Traxler had called the election a referendum on President Nixon's policies and moral leadership and called the president the only real issue. White House mum on a subpoena request. That story coming up. I love Tommy. You know, he's, well, no different than my own grandchildren, except he's never had much love and attention. When I first met him, he never talked, and everyone thought he was mute. I'm a foster grandparent to Tommy. <laughs> Not long ago, I began teaching him how to match up colors with words and objects. It just wasn't working, and I was getting frustrated. Then one day, he looked at an apple. He said, red. He said, red. I lit up inside, and I cried, <laughs> and I kissed him for loving me. The Foster Grandparent Program has many volunteers over 60 years of age devoting themselves part-time, giving personal care and attention to children in institutions. The Foster Grandparent Program is one part of action. Action is doing something. There is something you can do. The White House has no comment on Watergate prosecutor Leon Jaworski's request for a subpoena for tapes and documents relating to 64 more conversations President Nixon had with aides. Jaworski says the materials needed for the Watergate cover-up trial. One of the defendants in the Mitchell Stans perjury conspiracy trial has completed his time on the witness stand. Correspondent Ann Compton reports from New York. John Mitchell finished up after three rough days on the stand, never budging from his story of innocence in the Robert Vesco affair. Following Mitchell to the stand was the man who followed him into the Attorney General's office, Richard Kleindienst. He contradicted former White House counsel John Dean's claim that when grand jury questioning about Vesco got hot, Mitchell called Dean asking that the message be passed on to Kleindienst. In a firm voice, Kleindienst said he has no recollection of that call from Dean. Kleindienst added, Mitchell needed no messenger boy anyway. Tomorrow, it's co-defendant Marie Stans in the witness box. Ann Compton, ABC News, at the Federal Courthouse in New York. Lieutenant William Kelly will be eligible for parole in a few months after Army Secretary Howard Calloway cut Kelly's sentence for the My Lai murders from 20 to 10 years. Randolph Hearst says he has no idea whether his daughter Patricia was coerced into joining in the bank robbery yesterday in San Francisco, but Miss Hearst's fiancé, Stephen Weed, says he feels he, she was coerced by her kidnappers. The FBI has named escaped convict Donald DeFries as one of the bank robbers. DeFries is believed to be the man who calls himself Field Marshal Sin Q of the SLA. 
Virginia ended its odd-even gasoline distribution plan a few minutes ago. Governor Mills Godwin announced the system was discontinued because more gasoline is available for Virginia drivers. The American Automobile Association says gasoline supplies remain good across the U.S., but the price of premium went up a penny a gallon in the past week to 58 cents. The AAA says the average price of regular gasoline stayed at 54 cents. This is Information Radio News. From the Kurt Murs Sports Desk, it's Steve Busby for the Royals and 18-year-old David Clyde for the Rangers tonight in Texas. They'll play again tomorrow night. Ken Stabler of the Oakland Raiders signed with a WFL team not long ago, and tonight quarterback Darrell LaMonica placed his signature on a California Suns contract. Stabler goes with the WFL in 1976, LaMonica after the coming season. Kansas City Chiefs veterans are said to be planning to boycott off-season workouts because of a lack of contracts between the Players Association and NFL team owners. And the Kansas Relay is open tomorrow in Lawrence. They run through Saturday. The Kansas City outlook fair and cool tonight with a low in the upper 30s. It'll be sunny and warmer tomorrow with a high around 70. Dan Henry, WDAF News. Marshall. Welcome to another fearful earful. And speaking of ears, the story we are about to direct to yours concerns a different part of the facial anatomy, the mouth. Only in this case, the mouth isn't there. Now, if that sounds incredible, listen carefully to the tale of Joe Gannett, who has the great misfortune of meeting up with men without mouths. If you think you're baffled by the mystery of how men can exist without mouths to breathe with, eat with, and speak with, then imagine the plight of poor Mr. Gannett himself. Jimmy, Jimmy, I saw another one today. I swear I did. A man without a mouth. Oh, Uncle Joe, you didn't. I'm telling you, I swear it on my mother's grave. He walked into this bar, see? He sat down at the end. He looked straight at me, Kitty, so help me. And he didn't have a mouth. Our mystery drama, Men Without Mouths, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Henry Slesser and stars Joe Silver and Patricia Elliott. It is sponsored in part by new sugar-free diet 7-Up and by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal. I'll be... It has a fresh, natural... Hello, this is Goldilocks. It seemed like only yesterday that I was a little girl tasting porridge. You know, this one's too hot. This one's too cold. And now I conduct taste tests on diet drinks. And there's one I must tell you about. Sugar-free diet 7-Up. It has a fresh, natural, delicious taste. It drives my taste meter crazy. Sugar-free diet 7-Up. <gasps> this one's just right. Answer on. I'm building a kite out of tissue paper and it's beginning to rain. What do I need? Umbrella or plastic kite. Answer wrong. How many children are born with birth defects? 250,000 a year in the United States. What's being done? The March of Dimes supports research, medical service, and public education programs. How can I help? Answer wrong? Like me, the March of Dimes needs money for answers. Give to the March of Dimes. That's what the Marines are looking for. A few good college men who want to lead. Men who have enough on the ball to be eligible for PLC, platoon leaders class. Not everyone can make it. It takes brains, it takes muscle, and summer training is no picnic. It takes men who want a real challenge. The challenge of leading Marine ground troops, 
flying sophisticated marine aircraft or serving as marine lawyers. If you're one of the few who can make it, there's financial assistance available during school, up to $2,700 over three years. There's even free civilian flying lessons for qualified men. PLC Ground, PLC Air, PLC Law, for a few good men. The story begins in the heart of New York City. A heart which, as usual, beats with the rhythm of rushing traffic, the clang of construction, the clamor of commerce, and the never-ending flow of people on their way to meetings, parties, rendezvous, and other human encounters. But we're interested in only one person today. There he is, just hailing a taxi on the corner of East 63rd Street. He's a dapper figure in his blue serge suit, his white shirt and conservative gray tie. He appears to be a man in his late 50s, well-dressed, well-tanned, and well-heeled. His name is Joe Gannett. Occupation? Retired. But retired from what? Listen. A taxi! A taxi! Taxi! Uh, 530 West Side Avenue. Right. Nice day for a change, eh? Yeah, that's okay. One day hot, one day cold. It's enough to drive you crazy. Yeah. Hey, you know something? You look familiar. Yeah. I'm a movie star, Mac. I'm Raquel Welch. No, I mean it. You really do. Do you ever live in Chicago? Look, you mind we do without the conversation? I'm from Chicago originally. Moved here about 10, 11 years ago. I could swear I knew you from some... Wait a minute. You're Joey Ganatello. You got it wrong, mister. Listen, you wouldn't remember me, Mr. Ganatello, but I used to drive for Turk Wilson sometimes. You remember Turk Wilson? He's in stir now, of course. They got him on income tax evasion. I don't know, no Turk Wilson, and my name isn't whatever you said, you understand? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, uh, no offense, mister. Okay. No offense. And no more conversation. Just a minute. Why, go on, take it easy. Oh, You're choking me. Couldn't believe my eyes when those things started to arrive this morning. You like your eyes? First the dishes, then the silver. Uncle Joe, that silver. It must have cost a fortune. Hey, 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 do I have to stand out here in the hall? Huh? You got a new apartment. Let me to take a look at it, huh? Of course. Come in. Hey. Only don't look too hard, please. Hey. Everything's still in such a mess. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. Well, I still got to paint the bedroom, and the drapes aren't up yet, uh-huh. and I'm going to cover the whole wall over there with bookshelves. Yeah. Ira's going to build them for me. Oh? And don't you think it was a good idea to break through to the dining room? Makes the living room look twice as big. We'll put up some kind of divider between the two. Hey, hey who's, who's this we? You got a roommate or something? No, of course not. Well, who's this Ira? A, a carpenter? No, a boyfriend. Oh, oh, you got yourself a steady, huh? Why do you think he's steady? Hey, listen, the guy who's going to build your bookshelves and dividers and all that oh, stuff. Never mind you know. about that. Come on, and see the kitchen. <laughs> hey, stop rushing me. Hey, how about give me a drink first? Oh, of course. I'm just so excited. <laughs> You're not sorry now, huh? About accepting all this? Yeah. How could I be sorry? My own co-op apartment? I just wish you hadn't paid all that money, Uncle Charlie. Ah, come on. You know why I did it, Kitty. I did it for your old man. This is the kind of thing Maddie Russo would have done if he was alive. No, Uncle Joe. That isn't true. My father could have never afforded anything like this. Well, if he hadn't been so dumb about life insurance, it... Ah, what's the use of worrying about that now, huh? He was my best pal, and you, well, you're like a 
You're like my daughter now. <laughs> and if a guy can't help his daughter, then, no, you know... No, if you keep talking like that, Uncle Joe, you're going to have a shoulder full of wet tears. Oh, come on, come <laughs> on, huh? Knock <laughs> off that sentimental guy. I mean, next thing you'll be sitting in my lap. And what, what would I ever say about that, huh? <laughs> Uncle Joe? Yeah? I'd like you to meet Ira. Oh, 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 so I was right, huh? It's serious, huh? I do like him. I like him very much. Yeah, what does this Ira do? I mean, besides build bookshelves. He's a doctor. A doctor? Hey, nice going, kid. Your mama would have liked that. His full name is Ira Hamill. Mm -hmm. And I didn't just meet him. He was doing some postgraduate work at college. Hey. I've actually known him for almost eight months. I told him about you, Uncle Joe. <laughs> sure, why not? I mean, I'm, I'm the only folks you got. I mean, I told him about your trouble. What are you talking about, huh? Now, what made you do a thing like that? I couldn't help it. It just came out. Ah. We were talking, and I told him about what happened to you that night. Nothing happened to me that night. It was just a mistake. You fainted. There wasn't any mistake about that. Fainted? What kind of a word is that? Old ladies faint. Me, I just conked out for a couple of minutes. Yes, but the reason... Never mind the reason. You're still trying to tell me I'm nuts? I didn't see that guy in the elevator? No. I'm not saying that. Because I did see him. Understand? He was some kind of freak, that's all. And maybe somebody who had a bad accident got himself sewn up. But a man without a mouth? It's so incredible. I mean, how can anyone live without a mouth? This guy was alive. I seen him. Yes, and he scared you so much. Did you cut that out? Hey, wait a minute. This, uh, this, this boyfriend, this doctor of yours, he's, he's not a shrink, is he? No. He's an internist. Good. For a minute there, I thought she was trying to make a patient out of me. <laughs> oh, Ira doesn't have any trouble getting patients. He does very well all by himself. Well, I guess I have to meet this terrific guy. Won't I ask him what his intentions are? <laughs> That's exactly what my intention is. To have you two meet. Anytime you're free. Me? I'm always free, you know that. Look, look, why don't you bring him over tonight, huh? To my place. You really mean it? Of course. I'll call that catering joint. We'll order some, something fancy like that beef Wellington joint, huh? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll open a bottle of that $60 wine and press the pants off. <laughs> we don't have to impress us. Well, sure, why not? Let him think you're an heiress or something. Oh, a, a princess, baby, huh? <laughs> oh, you make me feel like a princess, Uncle Joe. <laughs> Okay, send that up. Look, look, make, make it two bottles. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so long. Uh, where's that food? It's not that catering joint. I told him it's 7 o'clock. Ah, uh, I guess that's them, huh? <gasps> oh! Oh, my God! No! Get away from me! Get out of here! Get out of here! Are you sure he's all right? Are you sure it's not his heart? No, his, uh, his heart's okay. Pulse is a little fast. It's just shock, Kitty. He'll be okay. He looks so terribly pale. Uh, he's, uh, he's coming out of it now. Hey. Hello. Hello, Mr. Gannett. I'm sorry to have to meet you like this. Yeah. I'm, uh, Ira Hamill. Uh, yeah, the doctor. <laughs> That was a very dirty trick, Uncle Joe. Getting Ira to make a house call by pretending to invite us to dinner. Uh, uh help me out. Yeah, we better, uh, take it easy, Mr. Uh, Gannett. I'm, I'm okay now. I'm okay. I just got a little dizzy. Now, how long was I out? I don't know. We got here at 7.15. Rang and rang, but nobody answered. I got word and called the super. Yeah, listen, did the, did the food get here? It's here. 
Oh, but never mind about that. What about the wine? I ordered some of that Chateau stuff. What uh, happened exactly? Nothing. Uncle Joe, please. The last time you had a blackout... Well, was it anything like the last time? You want the truth. It was exactly like the last time. A man without a mouth. And she told you that, too? Well, it was interesting. I even looked up a book I have, Anomalies and Curiosities of Medicine. There is a condition called uh, atresia of the mouth. I'm uh, afraid I don't know of any modern case. So what you're saying is there is no such thing? No, I didn't say that. For one thing, I, I don't really know the whole story. Just what Kitty told me about uh, you seeing this man in the elevator. That's right. He was in the corner of the elevator, reading the newspaper. He didn't even look up when I got in the car. But then I turned around and I seen him, staring at me. So he had eyes, but no mouth. None that I could see. Just skin, covering everything from his nose to his chin. It was only an optical illusion. I'm sure of it. Mr. Gannett, did you see that man again? Tonight? No. You mean it was something else this time? It was another one. A different man right at my front door. But there was something unusual about him. It was the same thing. He didn't have any mouth. Oh, Uncle Joe. Now, look. Maybe it's freaks. The freaks walk around it. Hey, hey. Martians, maybe. <laughs> what, what do you think, Doc? Could it be, could it be Martians? Well, why should they pick on you? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I've never done nothing to a Martian. Why pick on me, eh? Hey, come on. Let's forget this junk. Huh? Let's eat that food. How about it, Kitty? You want to warm it up for us? <laughs> All right, Uncle Joe. <laughs> what the heck? we got mouths. Let's use them. <laughs> Is it all right to uh, come in, Mr. Gannett? Is Kitty with you? No, no. In fact, uh, Kitty doesn't even know I'm here. Hmm? Huh? And why are you? I just thought you and I could have a private conversation, if that's all right. Well, let's let's make it some other time. I was taking a little nap. I'm not feeling so hot. Well, maybe I can help. I am a doctor. It's nothing serious. I think maybe I just bumped my head when I took that fall the other night. Want me to have a look at it? I said no. If I wanted a doctor, I'd call one. Well, I'm not here as a doctor. I'm, I'm here as Kitty's fiancé. Fiancé? Hey. You mean you two are engaged? That's right. <laughs> well, okay. Swell. I'm, I'm glad for you. For both of you. I know Kitty means a lot to you, Mr. Gannett. Sure, she means a lot. Her old man was my best friend. She's a kind of a... a legacy. She thinks a great deal of you, too. She, uh considers you her entire family. Look, look, you want my blessing. You got it. You just treat my girl right. That's all I ask. I didn't come for your blessing. I came to ask you a question. Yeah? About what? About you and the syndicate. What was that? I know something about you that even Kitty doesn't know, Mr. Gannett. I know what you used to do for a living. Mr. Joe Gannett seems to be a man who is not merely haunted by strange men without mouths. He also seems to be haunted by his past. Is it possible that the cab driver was correct? That Joe Gannett and Joey Gannatello are one and the same person? And is there any connection between his past and his terrifying present? We'll find out when we return shortly to Act Two. Makes 
it all away When you say but You say you care enough to only want The king of fears There is no Anheuser Bush, St. Louis. Your contributions to care have given help and hope to millions of needy people around the world. When they were hungry, you nourished them. When they were thirsty, you brought them safe water to drink. When they were sick, you made them well. When they were homeless, you provided them shelter. When they could not read, you helped build their school. When they were without hope, you showed them how to help themselves. CARE, the International Aid and Development Organization. By helping one human being anywhere, you help mankind everywhere. People who need CARE need your help. Please send your dollars to CARE, Department 2, New York, 10016. Dr. Ira Hamill may be the most important man in the life of Kitty Russo. And Kitty Russo is the most important person in Joe Gannett's life. But right now, Uncle Joe has every reason for wanting Dr. Hamill to go away and leave him alone. But Ira is a persistent young man. As persistent as the memories which Joe Gannett has been determined to forget. Okay. What do you know about me, Doc? I know you were called before the Illinois Crime Commission back in the 50s. You weren't old enough to blow your nose in the 50s. That's right. I don't remember anything about it. But I've read magazines. And I've seen television documentaries. But this uh, man I saw yesterday, this psychiatrist friend of mine, he was just getting his medical degree during the hearings. He remembered you, too. Did you say psychiatrist? I thought it wouldn't hurt to have his opinion. About whether I was nuts, huh? No, he didn't give me any diagnosis. He said he wouldn't even try, not on the basis of such slim evidence. But when I mentioned your name, well, he wondered if uh, Joe Gannett might have once been Joe Gannettello. Was a pretty good guess, wasn't it? Why don't you go home and practice medicine, Doc? You say one word that's going to Kitty. Now I'll really act like her papa and tell her her boyfriend stinks. Believe it or not, Mr. Gannett, I'm trying to help you. But well, here's how you can help me. Here, go through this. This psychiatrist friend of mine, he did have an idea about these apparitions you've been seeing. The men without mouths sounded valid to me. He did, though. If you want me to, uh tell you what he said. Shut the door. Okay. Tell me. He said there was no doubt that they were hallucinations. But the pattern was fairly clear, given your background. What's that got to do with it? What does it bring to your mind? The idea of a man without a mouth. Well, you tell me. All right. Someone who can't talk, isn't that obvious? A man without a mouth is silenced. Mouthless men tell no tales, just like dead men. What are you trying to say, Buster? You calling me a murderer? I'm just reporting my conversation, Mr. Gannett. The psychiatrist said, well, your past associations may have left you with strong guilt feelings related to, well, informers or would-be informers. That's, that's, uh, that's not an accusation, just an analysis. You all through? Well, the only reason I'm telling you this is because it might help. The only reason I want to help you is because of Kitty. I, well, I'd jump off the George Washington Bridge if Kitty said jump, Ira. Okay. 
Okay, you jump off bridges if you want to. You do anything you please, Doc, except for one thing. You don't say one word about this to Kitty. She really doesn't know, does she? One word, and I'll write your diploma around your neck, you hear me? I wasn't going to tell her, Mr. Gannett. I don't want to see Kitty hurt. I love her, just as you do. Now you can open that door again. Sky Doctor. Do you want another drink, Mr. Gannett? Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, Harry, Harry. Another drink, that's right. Here you go. Yeah, right up to the top, Harry. Right up to the brim, huh? Sure, Mr. Gannett. You know, we always take good care of you. Nobody has to take care of me. I take care of myself, Harry. I always have. Sure, that's the way. Look out for number one, right? Hey, Harry. You know something? You know, you got a good, strong mouth. Thanks, Mr. Gannon. A guy can see your mouth, plain as day. And I was thinking of growing a mustache. You figure that wouldn't be a good idea? Hey, Harry, people have to have mouths, don't they? Uh, yeah, they sure do. Listen, some of the people come in here, they got real big mouths. Never stop talking for a minute. You never saw anybody without a mouth, Harry, did you? Uh, no, Mr. Gannett. I can't say that I did. Oh, excuse me. I got a new customer. Uh, what can I do for you, sir? Oh, God. Oh, no. No. It's another one. It's another one. Hey, what's the matter? I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out. Hey, Mr. Gannett. Let me out. What's the matter? Let me out. <laughs> It's me. Uncle Joe? Yeah. Kitty, I seen another one today. I swear I did. A man without a mouth. Oh, Uncle Joe, you did. I'm telling you, I swear it on my mother's grave. He walked into this bar. He sat down to the end. He looked straight at me, Kitty, so help me. And he didn't have a mouth. Oh, Uncle Joe, you need help. You've got to have help. I thought, I thought maybe that, that friend of yours, a doctor... I thought maybe I, should, maybe I should see him. I wish you would, Uncle Joe. He could recommend someone. Yeah, yeah, look, I'll see him, Kitty. Kitty, I gotta do something. <laughs> Please. Sit down, Mr. Gannett. Thanks. You've, uh, seen another one, haven't you? Now, listen to me, Doc. I, I know you think I'm nuts. I'll be seen as a psychiatrist, not a guy like you. I'll be happy but... to give you the name of someone. No, 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 wait, no, listen to me. I couldn't take that. I, I mean, go to a shrink. I, I'm just not the type. But, but you, you got a, you got a good head on your shoulders. I, I can tell. I'm not a psychiatrist. But you can help me. I know you can. I got ghosts haunt me, just like you said. I never believed in ghosts before, but maybe I've got to believe now. I'm not a spiritualist either. Look, I figured two ways. I could go to a doctor. Well, I could go to church and talk to a priest. Both might help. That's one thing psychiatrists and the church have in common. They know that confession is good for the soul. What do you mean, confession? It's the uh, root of the problem, isn't it? Guilt feelings build up pressure in the mind. Sometimes the pressure becomes unbearable and, you know, there's some kind of explosion. What do you mean... In the brain? Well, you might have been right when you used the word ghosts. The ghosts of the past may be haunting you, Mr. Gary. The past, the past, always the past. Why do you have to keep bringing that up? Isn't that the whole point? No! Where do these ghosts come from? From hell, that's from where. You mean they're ghosts of... Dead people? I knew I shouldn't have come here. I knew it'd be a waste of time. Now, wait a minute, so Mr. So long, doctor. You were right. You're no shrink. Maybe you're not any kind of doctor. Wait. Kitty and I are having a, a party in a couple of weeks, an engagement party. Have a good time. No, no, no. We want you to come. It's important to Kitty that you be there. I don't like parties. So long. I never 
should have gone there in the first place, a stupid kid. Was a stupid kid like that. It's... Hey, watch where you're going, mister. Oh, no. Oh, no. told you about me seeing him today. Uncle Joe, is it true that you don't want to come to our engagement party? Uh, you know me, Kitty. I'm not... Uh, I'm just not the party type. But you have to be here. All of Ira's relatives are going to be here. And there won't be anyone at all from my side. Uh, honey, I just can't make it. I, Kitty, I got a million things I got to get this place of mine in some kind of shape. I mean, it's got all kinds of junk laying around. Joe. I, I, Okay, honey, I'll, I'll try to be there. It's next Friday, 8.30, right here. I'll try, honey, I will. So long. <coughs> as long as... As long as I don't go nuts before then. Maybe I should clean up the junk around here. Look in that closet. Oh, look at all that junk. This Christmas stuff I ain't even open. Yeah. This old typewriter, I should give that away, get rid of it. What am I going to do, write a book? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's the thing, all right. <laughs> Confession's good for the soul. I ought to put down a whole story like the doc said. <laughs> Maybe he's right about it. Nah, I couldn't even write a postcard. <laughs> hey, man, how about this? Yeah. <laughs> the tape recorder, one kitty gave me last year. She said I never even touched the thing. Hmm. See, how does this thing work anyway? Yeah, on, off, record, stop, rewind, play. What? There's nothing very hard about that. Let's see, where's the microphone here? Oh, yeah, it is. It plugs in here, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that looks right. Now, what, uh... Press the record button, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, testing one, two, three. Uh, testing one, two, three. Okay. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, press the rewind button now. Uh, then press play. Testing one, two, three. Uh, testing one, two, three. It's easy enough. Only how easy is it going to be to confess? Well, only one way to find out. Try. Uh, my name is Joe Gannett. No, that's not starting off with the truth, is it? My name is Joey Gannettello. In 1945... No, 46. I shot and killed a man named Ricky Natans. What the heck am I doing? Am I crazy? I can't put that on tape. That's crazy. I can't. Well, maybe, maybe that's the way. If they're really ghosts, then maybe that's what they want. A confession. Sure, why not? Nobody will hear it. I'll tell everything, but I'll, I'll take the tape and stick it in an envelope. I'll leave it at my desk and write to be opened only after my death. Maybe, maybe that'll make them leave me alone. My name is Joe Gannett. I used to be called Joey Gannettello. I was born and raised in Chicago... I worked for a man named Turk Wilson. In 1946, I shot and killed a man named Ricky Natans. Turk Wilson paid me $200 to kill him on account of Natans talking to the feds about a black market operation. Six months after that, 
I shot and killed a man named Wally Sanchez. I don't know why Turk Wilson wanted him dead. A tape recorder is a wonderful device. A very useful tool in all sorts of situations. And if confession is good for the soul, you might even call it a confessional box. But will it be the right answer for Joe Gannett? Will it provide him with the magic formula to rid him of all his mouthless phantoms? We'll find out when I return shortly with Act Three. And now, another story of the ball and chain, as Kellogg's Special K presents The Library. Welcome to the public library. May I help you, sir? Uh, yes, I'd like to check out... Um, I'd like to check out Famous Laundromats of the World by Audrey Schnorbart. Sir, excuse me, but isn't that ball and chain you're wearing just like the ones they use in the Kellogg's Special K commercial? Uh, this ball and chain? Shh, yes, that. One. How are you going to get rid of it? Well, you know, lots of good exercises. And by eating smart at every meal, starting with the Special K breakfast. Don't you have to watch your calories? Yes, and the Special K breakfast is less than 240 calories. Less than 240 calories? Right. A one-ounce bowl of high-protein Special K, four ounces of skim milk, tomato juice, and coffee. It's really tasty, and it's going to help me get rid of this ball and chain. I'd say it's <laughs> long overdue, get it? <laughs> Your happy ending could begin with the Special K Breakfast from Kellogg's. The Veterans Administration helps people in little ways. A veteran, let's say, is trying to get an appointment. He is filed to go to school under the GI Bill. Uh, he's not getting any money, but he is entitled. Well, what's wrong with writing a letter saying that under the law, this man is entitled to receive $220 a month? for attending school on a full-time basis. Believe it or not, he can take that letter with the little job, take it to the real estate people, and because he has an additional income of $220, although he isn't receiving it, it makes his chances of getting that apartment much better. And, and this is what I mean about the little things. Going beyond the duty every once in a while. Just go a little bit out of your way to help someone. Uh, that's my philosophy. To me, these are little things. But big things to that person. Very a big thing to that person. At VA, we try a little harder to help. It is now two weeks later. The day, Friday. The occasion, the engagement party of Kitty Russo and Dr. Ira Hamill. As you can hear, it's a very happy occasion. But for Kitty Russo, it becomes even happier when the doorbell rings again and she opens it for a very important guest. <laughs> Uncle Joe! Hey, Kitty, well, here I am, just like I promised. Oh, Uncle Joe! I almost gave up hope. What? What for? Didn't I say I'd be here? You never said it very convincing. Uh, Hello. Mr. Gannett. Uh, Glad you made it after all. Hiya, Doc. Hey, you think I'd miss my little girl's one and only engagement party? Huh? Well, I'm glad you didn't. I think Kitty would have been very disappointed. Well, listen, no engagement is official without me, right, Kitty? That's right, Uncle Joe. Oh, you look just marvelous. Ira, doesn't he look well? Oh, yeah, you look fine, Mr. Gannett. Been feeling okay? Me? I feel like a million bucks. Oh, it's so wonderful to hear you say that. Well, then you haven't had any more... Uh, Trouble. Would be like passing out? No, no, no more of that. No, I didn't mean just that. It's all over, Doc. The whole problem. It's all over and done with. Then you're not seeing anything peculiar these no, days. No, no. I figured out what the whole trouble was. Yeah. I changed my brand of booze. Oh, Uncle Joe, <laughs> come on. <laughs> That's what it was. I changed my booze. I changed my reading glasses. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Speaking of booze, how do you get a drink in this joint? Oh, huh? You come on with me. I'll show you where the best booze is. Right, <laughs> Say, is it uh, really true? Have the hallucinations stopped? Stopped cold, just like that. Oh, I'm really glad to hear that. So am I. For a while back there, I thought I'd have to take a trip to the funny farm. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but it hasn't happened once in the last two weeks. Yeah, that, that certainly gives us something to drink to, doesn't it? Yeah, we'll drink the kitty, Doc. I mean, Ira. Yeah. Uh, you like uh, scotch, right? Yeah, scotch is fine. Um... <laughs> Listen, Ira, I 
I, uh, I said a couple of things here uh, once a nice. I, uh, I hope you can forget. No, I didn't take any offense. That's good. I found, you know, you marrying Kitty, that means you'll be, you'll be stuck with me, too, huh? <laughs> Joe, why do you think it happened? What? Losing your ghost. Oh, I don't know. I guess he just got tired of haunting me. Huh? <laughs> oh, hey, hey, now, listen, I mean, I, I got a little present for you oh. and Kitty. No, nothing fancy, just something small and green. Huh? Here. Thanks, Joe. Okay, come on, open it up, take a look. Well, all right. That's a lot of money, Joe. Well, a couple of kids get married today. They need every penny they can get their hopes out. Oh, I, I still think it's too much. Now, look, look, you got a nice long future ahead of you. Me, most of what I got is past, you know? Well, I know something else, too. The past is the past, Joe. Once it's gone, it's gone. Understand? Hey, Ira, you know something? I think... I think Kitty got herself a pretty good catch. Come on, now, honey. You don't have to do this. I can get my own taxi. <laughs> it's all right, Uncle uh, Joe. I just want to make sure you get uh, home all right. Oh, yeah. I know what you think. You think your Uncle Joe is drunk, <laughs> huh? That's what you think. You just had a very good time. That's well, it. I had a very good reason that my little girl is getting herself engaged. Hey. Now, look at that, huh? You see that? See what? That lady. There's some nerve, huh? Hey, lady! Lady! We were here first! Well, don't worry about it, Uncle Joe. There'll be more than one cat. Yeah, people shouldn't do that. It's not nice to do that. Hey, lady! Are you trying to steal our cab? Oh, excuse me, honey. I'll Uncle Joe! Now, listen, lady, you can't do... Who... <gasps> Again? Who no mouth? Uncle Joe! <laughs> no! Come back! No mouth! Please! No mouth! Well, you're a lucky man, Joe. You must have good, strong bones because you didn't break one of them. I'm, I'm okay. A car just knocked the wind out of me. Look, uh, I ought to pull some strings where to get me out of this place. Well, they just want you for observation, Joe, just for a couple of days. I'll run home and, and get you a toothbrush and anything else you might need. Uh, and your uh, hospitalization card. Don't forget that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There's no, no use adding insult to injury. Now you're being sensible. Okay. Where's my clothes? Everything's right here in the closet, but don't get any ideas. No, no, I'm thinking about my house keys, sir, and the one in the pockets. Don't worry about the keys. I've got my old set with me. Okay. Well, uh, why don't you go now, then, huh? All right. I'll be back in an hour or so. Ira, uh, listen, I, I want to talk to you alone. All right, about what? You was wrong. What do you mean? Your whole theory was all wet. The skies without mouths. I mean, you thought I was being haunted by a lot of... a lot of ghosts from the past, but... you were wrong. Why do you say that? Because... I saw another one. Tonight. And it wasn't a man. It was a woman. What? You heard me. I saw a woman. Without a mouth... And there ain't a woman in my whole life I ever... I ever felt guilty about, you understand? That sent your whole idea up the flu. Look, Joe, I told you I wasn't a psychiatrist. Now, maybe my diagnosis was wrong, or maybe it was incomplete. It was wrong. There ain't no reason for me to see a woman without a mouth. I never heard a woman in my life, never. All right, all right. So I was mistaken. I'm sorry. And I... I did it all for nothing. I put the whole thing on tape. Well, what were you going to say? The tape. The tape in my library. What are you talking about, Joe? My my hospitalization card, all that stuff. I, I keep it in the library. I, I, in the top drawer of my desk. Well, don't worry. I'm sure Kitty will know where to look. Yeah. Yeah, she'll know, all right. She'll know exactly. Uh, hey, listen, I... Uh, uh, do me a favor, will you? I'm kind of... kind of sleepy. Maybe if I took a little nap. Well, sure, Joe. I'll let you sleep. Thanks. I'll, uh... I'll see you later. Yeah, fine. I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. 
get home. Maybe she didn't find it. Maybe she didn't even look in that envelope. Kitty. Kitty, you here? Kitty. Library door's closed. $200 to kill him on account of Nathan oh. talking to the feds about a black market operation. Six months after that, I shot and killed a man named Wally Sanchez. Oh, my God. I don't know why Turk Wilson wanted him dead, but I shot him. I got $500 for that job. I was moving up in the world. The next man I hit was Vic Santione. And I had to take care of his brother Tommy when he went gunning for Wilson. I never got picked up or even booked for these killings. I was a very lucky man. Kitty. Kitty. What do you think you're doing? Can't you see what I'm doing, Uncle Joe? I'm playing your tape. The one you had in the envelope. Who told you to do that? Didn't you see what it said? Yes. I saw what it said. It said... Not to be opened until your death. Did you think I could resist something like that? You know me, Uncle Joe. Kitty, give me that tape. You know that's why Pop called me Kitty in the first place. Not because my name was Catherine. My name's Mary. But he always said I was as nosy as a kitten, as curious as a cat. Honey, please. Please, you shouldn't have listened to that stuff. It's got nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with me anymore either now. That was the second time, Uncle Joe. What? What did you say? It's the second time I've played the tape. I heard it all the way through the first time, but I didn't believe what I was hearing. Uh, I couldn't. Why? Why did you have to do that? Papa. My poor Papa. Kitty, Kitty listen to me. You don't know about these things. You don't know how a man gets pushed and shoved in this world until he's got to be like an animal. He was worried about her finding out what he was doing. He never stopped worrying about that. Only then they needed a fall guy for a payroll job, and they picked Marty, and he refused. He said he wouldn't take a rap. He wouldn't go to jail and shit. <sighs> Marty had this daughter in college. He called her Kitty. He was worried about her finding out what he was doing. He never stopped worrying about that. Only then they needed a fall guy for a payroll job, and they picked Marty, and he refused. He said he wouldn't take a rap. He wouldn't go to jail and shame his daughter. He said he'd spill for it. Are you listening, oh, Uncle Lord, Joe? Lord. Oh, made him a problem, you know. He wanted him hit. I said I didn't want the job. Marty was my friend. Him and his daughter was like my family. But they didn't care about that. It was like a, a test of my loyalty. So I had to do it. I had to kill Marty Russo. Is that why you took such good care of me, Uncle Joe? Is that why? I had to do what they said. I had to do it. Kitty, it would have been the same with your papa if he was told to hit me. There's a gun in your desk, Uncle Joe. Is this the gun you killed him no, with? Put that down, Kitty. The thing is loaded. Tell me how you killed my father. No. Your best friend. Why don't you tell me how? No, please put it down. Did he know it was you, Uncle Joe? Kitty. Did you look him in the eyes when you shot him? Kitty. The way I'm looking at you. Kitty. God. Is this? It sounds like the whole room is breathing. <laughs> I can hear it breathing. Is that me? Do I hear myself? That <laughs> light. I never saw a light that big. But it's, it's not the summer. I can't open my eyes. <laughs> It's too bright. But I gotta open them. I gotta... I gotta see where I am. Oh, no! Oh, they're here! Oh, 
The men with our mouths. The whole army. And the woman. The woman without a mouth. No. Get away from me. Go away. Go away. His eyelids are moving. Anesthesia must be wearing off. His pulse is still dropping fast, Doctor. Keep that respirator going. It's no use. We're losing him. Past tense, nurse. We've lost him. I'm sorry. Yeah. So am I. But I'm not sorry to get this mask off. Oh, yes. Me too. It always makes me feel as if I have no mouth at all. Well, it seems that Joe Gannett was seeing ghosts, all right. But in this case, they weren't the ghosts of the past. They were the ghosts of the future. Men without mouths, clustered around an operating table, not trying to destroy his life, but attempting to save it. I'll be back shortly. Hi, Ms. Goldilocks here. Professionally, taste-testing diet drinks can be very difficult, but I've just had to bear with it. Then I found sugar-free Diet 7-Up. It doesn't taste like other diet drinks. It's fresh, light, natural, delicious. Sugar-free Diet 7-Up tastes so good that I've taste-tested it hundreds of times, and each time I've given it my seal of approval. Yes, this one's just right. Expecting a baby? Plan to refinish that old crib? If so, make certain that the layers of old paint are completely removed and the new paint you use is labeled non-toxic. Also, remember to check all crib surfaces. There should be no sharp edges. If the teething rails are damaged, they should be replaced. For free detailed information concerning crib safety, write Cribs, Washington, D.C., 20207. A public service message from the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission. Of course, we're really not worried about men and women without mouths at the Radio Mystery Theater, as long as they have ears. And since you seem to have a pair of ears in good working order, we hope you'll turn them to our wavelength again. It's our purpose in life to show you that sometimes it's fun to be afraid. Our cast included Joe Silver, Patricia Elliott, Ira Lewis, and Dan Ako. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Hey, that's wonderful. That's just like a magician I saw once. It's, it's not magic, Effie. It's a natural power. I read somewhere that most of us use only a small portion of our brain potential. Uh, less than 5%. Y you mean that anyone can do what, what you just did? Sure, most people can. I'm sure of it. Oh, hey, Joe, will you teach me? Will you show me how you did that? If you want to, I can show you that and much more. Like what? Well, like hear what I have in my mind without my saying a word. Oh, hey, that'd be neat. We could talk and nobody would hear us. I could show you how to move objects from across the room. We could clean up from here. I could even teach you how to fly. Yeah, like Peter Pan. Hey, look, I'm flying. Hey, you mustn't joke about it, Effie. Oh, hey, I'm, I'm sorry, Joseph. L listen, I wasn't making fun of you. I... I was just happy. Never make fun of me, Effie. You're frightening me. It's all over now. Let's let's finish the dishes. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams... Bye.
WDAF, Kansas City.